This is the birthplace of the city of Maryville. John Craig and his family moved here and built a palisade fort on the bluff that you see behind me. This fort had 15-foot palisade walls and a walkway around the inside so that they could be constantly on their guard. 250 men, women, and children lived in this fort for approximately one year, while 500 of the Creek and Cherokee Indians were on the outside in a warlike manner. This spring that you see here was inside the palisade walls and provided the necessary water for sustenance to the animals and to the people. The walls were of uh, hewn logs made from the uh, neighboring area. And this was the uh, lookout spot for the area. As we move farther to the west of this site, you'll find that there were uh, an ideal spot. John Craig bought 343 acres from Shockley Donaldson, and he had had 100,000 acres that he had received in a grant. This land was uh, then divided into 50-acre lots, and we'll go now to the Bicentennial Monument across the street from the Blunt County Public Library, and there is a map, a map there that we'll be able to show you exactly how everything looked in the early days. This is the Maryville Bicentennial Monument, and we have a map here showing the original plot for the city of Maryville. It was decided that this uh, site would be the uh, city of Maryville because there was controversy over F uh, Craig's Fort and Gamble's Fort. Craig's Fort won out. On the map, you'll notice that 50 acres that uh, John Craig had bought was donated to or sold to the city for a village, and as a result, they laid out the necessary streets and divided each lot into quarter acre lots with the necessary streets and alleys. Pistol Creek is on three sides of the city. It was decided and it's recorded that that would, uh, each time that it rained, it would wash the village clean. On this site is the site of First Methodist Church. The brick building constructed around 19 and 12 was removed and Citizens Bank was incorporated. On one of the back lots of the town is where First Methodist originally was sited. This is the site of the Broadway United Methodist Church, originally called the Southern Methodist Church. It was on this site that the McKenzie Hotel existed, also referred to in many cases as the Veranda Hotel. Maryville College was located on this corner for the last time on Broadway. In 18 and 70, they relocated over on the hill where they now exist. You notice on the plaque that this was also the site, uh, at that time it was called the Southern and Western Theological Seminary. Changed later in, uh, to Maryville College. It was on this site at the time of the Civil War. The forces of both sides used the buildings, tore them up, and after the war was over, the front part of the facade of the building completely fell out into the street. In uh, 1893, New Providence Presbyterian Church moved to this particular site where they stayed until 1953. You see the post office behind me. That was built in 1916 and was our only post office here until we relocated out on Knoxville Pike. You notice that it's at the corner of Court and Broadway. The bank building that you see was originally First Federal Bank First National Bank, Blunt National Bank. It was built in 1921 
and during the Depression had to close, but was reopened in 1934 with Colonel W. B. Townsend of the fame of South, uh, Little River Lumber Company and Railroad Company as president. This is the site of Mr. S. A. Patton's jewelry store for many years, an excellent uh, jeweler, manufacturer of fine uh, jewelry, and the front of it still has his name. You notice that uh, this was one of the landmarks of Maryville. At one time, he had a large man's watch on a pedestal out front that told accurate time. This is the site of Woods Tavern. It was to this place with its two-story rooms. The uh, future king of France, Louis Philippe, stayed here on his trip down toward Georgia and Teleco Village. And this was also on the stop that his uh, tourist advisor was the one and only George Washington. George Washington fixed his itinerary, told him where to stop, and the people that he should see. The site of Cusick and Broadway was also the site of Courthouse Square until the courthouse was moved to its site at the present time in 1906. A number of historical things have happened in this particular area. You notice on the side of the bank building is the sign uh, put there by the Tennessee Historical Commission where Sam Houston joined the services in the War of 18 and 12. It was at this site that the fire in the courthouse just would have destroyed almost all of our records had it not been for the heroic stand of one of the young ladies, a black slave, to the Toole family. She went in and carried out the heavy books and saved them for posterity. They are still in use today. This is the site where the uh, soldiers were supposed to be stationed, at least that's what was thought, and the uh, cannon was set up during the Civil War at the Cape and uh, Broadway entrance and it was at that spot that they fired on the courthouse. They missed the courthouse to a certain extent, but set all of the places that we have just photographed on fire during the siege of the Civil War. General Sherman came down Broadway at one time, long before he was famous for his march from Atlanta to the Savannah. He went straight down this highway and this, incidentally, is the site of the uh, federal road going south. And the road goes straight out this area to the old Niles Ferry Highway and on to Teleco Blockhouse and farther south. This is the area that was hardest hit locally by the Civil War. Broadway Towers stands where the old Sam Houston Hotel used to be. It was uh, Sam Houston Hotel and then was later called, was torn away and uh, with a gamble building was erected there where royal jewelers and offices occupied the site. Now, at the, it was at the corner of Broadway and Love. Now the Love Street has been closed completely and this is Broadway Towers for the uh, elderly. This landmark on Broadway, known as McCam and Ammon's Funeral Home since 1928, has occupied this site. Prior to 1928, it was the P.K. Kinney home. Mr. Sam McCammon had been associated with his brother-in-law, Hugh Bogle, in the Bogle and McCammon Furniture and Undertaking Establishment in the old building that became Capitol Theater. Mr. Roy Ammons had been associated with A.K. Harper, Harper Furniture and Undertaking Establishment, also located on Broadway in the early days.
In this cemetery is buried a crown prince of Jamaica who died as a student at Maryville College. This is also the site of New Providence Presbyterian Church, had a, a stone church, a brick church on this location. And this was also the burial site of the founder of Maryville College, whose remains were later moved to the Maryville College Cemetery. This particular site has 152 Revolutionary War soldiers buried in it. Many of them are in unmarked graves since the descendants have forgotten the site. This was one of the places that was outside the village of Maryville. The old village covered Norwood to Cemetery Street. Cemetery is now called Kate Street. It covered uh, the area from Harper Street over to Church Street. That was the village of Maryville. The beginning, this was outside and was all right. The uh, church formed inside the John Craig Fort in four, uh, 17 and 86. This was the first building site of the New Providence Presbyterian Church. Behind me, adjoining New Providence Presbyterian Cemetery, is St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Originally, it was the Quaker Church, or the Friends, as it was known. Went into disrepute, disrepair, and the uh, building was acquired by the Episcopal Church.